everybody and welcome to Costa Rica. This is a country that has been on our bucket list for so many years and we are so excited to be here. Just look at that unbelievable view behind us. So we can't wait to start exploring this amazing country. We left Mexico via Cancun after three amazing months traveling through the country and flew across the Caribbean Sea before touching down in San Jose. After surviving ridiculous custom lines, we boarded a bus for the town of Santa Elena which took us up winding mountain roads with incredible views before dropping us in the small town that would be our base for the next week. So we've just arrived to our little cottage here in Santa Elena and it is absolutely beautiful. We've got a personalized message on the wall just here, welcoming us. And of course the Pura Vida, which is like the Costa Rican mantra, it means like pure life. But the best part about this place has to be the view from outside our door. Come check this out. It's so beautiful, I don't wanna leave this place. <laughs> So we're actually here in Santa Elena for about a week and we'll be exploring all the cloud forest reserves which we're really excited about because we only arrived today so we have about half a day to look around the town and we also found like a little hidden gem here so we decided to do a little hike and try to find it ourselves. We headed down into town and grabbed our first traditional Costa Rican brunch from a local restaurant. Santa Elena is definitely the best and most convenient place to base yourself for exploring the surrounding cloud forests in Monteverde as there are so many tour operators and restaurants in the town. After a little exploring, we headed to the edge of town and the start of the short trail to Ficus La Rise. So this natural tree arch behind us is called Ficus La Rise and it's literally about a few hundred meters outside of the center of Santa Elena but you feel like you're almost in the middle of the, the jungle. You're just in this deep valley. I think the tree's just grown across the valley. I don't know whether it's fallen or not but it's created this gorgeous feature that we're gonna get some cool footage from on top of. So it's about 6 a.m. and the reason we are up at this crazy hour is because today we're going to be exploring the first of the reserves here around Santa Elena. The one we're going to be exploring today is called the Santa Elena Cloud Forest Reserve. It's about a five kilometer drive north of the town. Most of the cloud forest reserves around here open around 7 a.m. and close around 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. So we're hoping to get there early to make the most of the day and the most of the price of our ticket. We just arrived to the reserve. First of all, we we're already in love. Second of all, just so you know, like kind of prices and stuff, we actually paid at about 11 pounds per person. There's actually about 12 kilometers of trails here. There's a couple short ones geared towards children and families, and then about three main long ones. And we're gonna try and do pretty much all of them. The first trail we're going to do is called Encantado. It's probably one of the hardest, although it's only three and a half kilometer long. There's gonna be a lot of ups and downs. So let's go and see. <laughs> So the majority of the cloud forests, as you can probably see behind me, are very wild and untamed. So not a place you can really go on a casual hike. 
Unfortunately, here around Santa Elena, there are a ton of reserves which have well-maintained and signpost trails that you can enter to go hiking in. These reserves are run by private or non-profit organizations, so obviously they have set prices for entry, which can be a little high, but the money does go straight back to the conservation and upkeep of the reserve, so it's a win-win for us. You basically just have to get used to the fact that a lot of things in Costa Rica are very expensive and there's no two ways around that. So we just had our first animal sighting. Yes. Well, I want to keep moving. We just saw some wild pigs. They were just up there somewhere, but... They the... disappeared within like yeah. a few seconds. <laughs> by the time we saw them and tried to get the cameras out, they were already gone. I think that either wild pigs or wild boars, I'm not entirely sure what yeah, is... didn't have a chance to see them. <laughs> no, but it's pretty cool. It just shows that there's animals all around you. You just, you don't see them a lot of the time. I know. Well, Maybe... sometimes I'm happy about it. <laughs> So we've just come to the end of the Encantado Trail and it was a lot of fun. A very, very wild trail. The path is not really like a paved one. It's well maintained, but it's a little bit muddy in places, but you really feel one with nature. We didn't see a single other person no. on the entire trail. Definitely recommend doing that one for sure. Now we're gonna move on to the Caño Negro Trail, which is the longest of the trails at just under five kilometers. So far, the Caño Negro trail is very much like the Encantado one. You made a good point about walking in the jungle. It's really cool and you really feel one with nature, but after a while, you just want to see something a little different. Like... Yeah, you want to get to maybe a waterfall, you yeah. want to get to a viewpoint, you want to get somewhere. On this one, there should be a viewpoint pretty soon, so we're excited about that. After a little more time walking through the forest with not a lot to see other than the trees and plants, we finally made it to our first viewpoint in the area and the true scale of the forest we were in came into focus. So we're just starting the third trail, which is called the Del Bajo Trail. And this one is also kind of like a meditation trail. There's different like activities you can choose to participate in. Don't use your phone. And only to talk like when absolutely necessary. Really just to take it all in basically, yeah. which is quite cool. I like the idea of it, but we will probably use our phone. Yes, <laughs> we need to share it with you guys. Okay, so the first challenge is to find a rock that calls to us and that's going to serve as like our support throughout the the experience. Found my rock. I can't even find one. I found my rock as well by the way. I would like to ask your permission for you to be my rock during this journey and if any negative thoughts come up during the walk the rock will hold on to them for me. The third challenge is to try and find an item that reminds you of your childhood. I mean, I used to play in the woods, <laughs> so I think I'll just pick a, a leaf. And then, of course, we've got to put the items we found back in the forest and give back to the forest. So our final trail of the day is the Youth Challenge Trail, which is the shortest of the trails, but does include the Observation Tower, where you can get the amazing view over the volcano.
We're just coming to the end of our day here in the Santa Elena Cloud Forest Reserve and we've had an amazing day. What we really enjoyed about this reserve is the amount of people here because we hardly see anybody. Maybe one trail that was a little bit busier but the rest we didn't see a single other soul other than us. And the price was pretty low actually for Costa Rica standards. It was pretty cheap so that's another thing that this one's got going for it. We're gonna head back to Santa Elena now. So we will catch up with you when we get to the next reserve. We've just arrived at the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve, which is the second one we're visiting here around Santa Elena. This one's about five kilometers just in the opposite direction yeah. from Santa Elena. With transportation again, you can take like the public bus. It only costs about one dollar one way, which is really cheap. Yeah. So I highly recommend if you're on a budget. And the entrance fee to this one is way, way higher than the other one. We paid $25 per person to get in here, yeah. which is really steep in comparison to the other one. I mean, it shows that it's just much popular. This one, we, when we arrived already, there were a lot more people around. There are 10 trails here in Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve, but they're all a lot shorter than the ones in Santa Elena. Here they vary in length from like 200 meters to about two kilometers. So overall, I think the park is a little bit smaller, but there is slightly more variety in the amount of trails. Well, we noticed straight away that the trails are definitely much more well maintained than the one in Santa Elena. So the Santa Elena one were more natural. Yeah, it felt like he, you were yeah. more in like the jungle. Here is like a proper path. Yeah, but the main selling point of this location is the hanging bridge that they have here. Usually to go on the hanging bridges, you need to pay to go into a separate park, like an adventure park or something, which comes with its own cost. But here the bridge is included in the price of admission. However, Unfortunately, today the bridge is closed because apparently a tree fell on it and it got damaged. This is Very seriously <laughs> just our luck, like wherever we go, oh, something like this I was this really happens. excited about this bridge because it was, it's a really long one. Unfortunately, it's closed, but most of the time it is open <laughs> and we've seen pictures and it's very cool. So that is a big selling point for yeah. this location for sure. just had our first animal encounter here. Unfortunately, again, it was so, <laughs> so fast quick. that it was gone before we could even get any footage of it. So you just have to take our word for it. But this one was really cool. Yeah. I'm not sure what animal it was. I'll put a picture up and I'll put the name of it on the video because I'll, I'll do a little bit of research. It was a really cool animal, really unique, I think, to this region. That's really cool that we've seen that already. We've only been in the park about 30 minutes. <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully we get to see a bit more and hopefully we can capture some, some of them for you. <laughs> crazy being in these forests because you can hear animals all around you. You know they're out there. It's so dense that you just can't see anything really. Every little sound you're like looking left, right, up, down, always searching. Usually it's just a leaf falling from a tree, but every so often you do get to see some animals. There are options here to do guided tours where the guides carry around the sort of like telescope, the little binoculars and telescope. If they do spot the animals, you can see them a little bit better. And the guided tours cost about $20, I think. If you've got sort of the money to spend and you want to see some animals, definitely the way to go about it because the guides are very knowledgeable. After exploring the trails, we came out on a beautiful viewpoint of the surrounding forest and took some time to appreciate this gorgeous landscape. After leaving the reserve, you should definitely check out the Hummingbird Cafe near the car park. You can grab something to eat, including an amazing cinnamon bun, and enjoy it whilst watching the hummingbirds feeding and darting around you.
We absolutely loved getting lost in the cloud forests of Santa Elena. If we had to choose a favourite, it would probably be the Santa Elena Reserve, as it was just a little bit more wild, much quieter than Monteverde Reserve, and overall we felt you got much better value for a much cheaper entry price. If you only have time for one, we would definitely recommend Santa Elena. We have plenty more exciting activities planned in this area, so we hope you'll join us on the next video. And in the meantime, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing for more adventures like this one, and we'll catch up with you on the next video.